My name is Michael Spinar, and I'm the Lake Michigan Lakewide Action and Management Plan, or LAMP, Program Coordinator for Indiana. On behalf of the Indiana Department of Environmental Management, I'd like to extend a welcome to everyone to this, the second in a series of 10 free webinars on topics anticipated to be of interest to the watershed protection and restoration community. Just so that everyone is aware, this session is being recorded. When the time comes for today's question and answer session, you will be able to unmute yourself. If you would prefer, there's a chat window at the bottom of the screen in which you may type your questions. The webinar series that I mentioned is anticipated to run from now through February, and it will co coincide with the development of the 2020 to 2024 Lake Michigan LAMP, which is the first to be uh, released for the lake under the 2012 Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement between the United States and Canada. When released, the LAMP will report out on the state of Lake Michigan and its ecosystem with respect to nine high-level general objectives. But more than that, it will document the action priorities to be undertaken by the 16, by the, excuse me, by the 21 federal, tribal, state, and local agencies and organizations that comprise the Lake Michigan Partnership. When the draft LAMP is complete, members of the public will be provided with an opportunity to comment on the draft document. The primary goals of this webinar series are to provide education about tools and programs available to watershed groups and others to assist with implementation of watershed protection and restoration efforts, to improve communication and information sharing among various watershed groups in Indiana's portion of the Lake Michigan Basin and to better connect groups operating in the western portion of the basin, um, the Lake Michigan coastal region with the eastern portion or the otherwise known as the St. Joe, uh, St. Joseph River Basin. As such, the watershed series is targeted toward a broad audience, including watershed groups, MS4 coordinators, environmental organizations, land trusts, members of the public, and in this case, recreational boaters and marinas with an interest in watershed protection and restoration. Though the webinars will have a Lake Michigan focus, many of the webinars like this one will be of interest to a broader statewide group. Each webinar is scheduled for approximately 60 minutes from 1 to 2 p.m. Central or 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern time, unless otherwise noted. Please refer to items Lake Michigan webinar series webpage, which is posted in the chat window um, for the latest scheduling updates and recordings of past presentations. Now, it's my very great pleasure to introduce Michelle Caldwell and Karen Taliha. Michelle is items Lake Michigan Beach Monitoring and Notification Program Coordinator and the Clean Marina Program Coordinator within the Lake Michigan Basin. Karen is IDEM's Clean Marina Program Coordinator for the rest of the state outside the Lake Michigan Basin, and she also manages IDEM's Clean Vessel Act Grant Program. Michelle and Karen, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Thank you. I hope you guys can hear me because I have to talk through a phone. Um, thank you, Michael. Thank you, everybody, for um, checking out this really cool watershed webinar series um, that Michael put together, and especially for tuning in today to learn about Indiana's Clean Marina and Clean Voter Program. Today's talk is going to be a tag team event between Karen and myself, and it's going to be um, due to the time, we only have an hour, um, it's going to be a, a brief overview of the programs, but Karen and I are um, always available to um, talk to you about more in-depth information. So, so with that, we hope you enjoy it and let's get started. Of course. <laughs> okay, can, I hope you guys can see. I've been having technical difficulties all morning, so I hope you can see the screen right now. And um, it looks good? Yes. Okay, good. All right. So Indiana is blessed with many beautiful lakes and rivers and streams to enjoy. And it's not surprising that boating is uh, the most popular activity on them. And it doesn't matter if it's, you know, motor boating, jet skiing, fishing, or sailing, there's often a downside um, to these activities, which is 
um, there can be negative impact uh, to our, um, our water bodies and our ecosystems. And some of them are on the screen, you can see, um, we wanna prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species to other water bodies. Um, we wanna prevent field drips and spills from entering the water. Um, being mindful to properly dispose of um, all trash, raw sewage, any type of marine debris that can um, hurt our uh, aquatic habitats. Um, be careful for any uh, cleaning chemicals that might leach into our water. Contaminated stormwater runoff is a non-point source pollution that we want to, um, to keep to address and control. And also a big one, at least in our Lake Michigan basin, is shoreline erosion. But not to worry, because this is where Indiana's Clean Marina and Clean Boater programs come in. See if I can do this. Yes. All right. So what is the Clean Marina program? Well, it's an environmental stewardship recognition program, and it's aimed at marinas, boatyards, yacht clubs, any other marine-related facilities, boater, boating organizations are all eligible, and it's completely voluntary. And what's the goal? The goal is to protect um, not only the waters within the marina's basin, but also the adjacent waters from all those negative impacts from the activities. And we have a really cool uh, webpage you guys can visit. And we also knew for 2020, got a new logo, Clean Marina logo that's up on the screen. So a little bit of background on the program. Um, our humble beginnings began actually when Indiana submitted our coastal non-point source pollution control plan. And we got some guidance back from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, or NOAA, and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, or the U.S. EPA, and they suggested that I, in Indiana, create a clean marina program um, to help protect the waterways, and so we did. And it was originally funded by a grant from NOAA to our Indiana Coastal Zone Program, and in 2008, and we did a pilot program of it within just the Lake Michigan Basin. And it turned out to be such a great idea. So we're like, well, why not expand the program and try to protect all the water bodies within the state? And so we did. And that um, that started, that process started in 2015. And, you know, um, the success of any type of environmental initiative really, um, it depends on like having key partnerships, having strong partnerships with other organizations um, that can help you further your goal. And we're lucky to have it with the Clean Marina program with um, DNR, our Coastal Zone program, um, Illinois Indiana Sea Grant, um, NOAA EPA tend to still um, support our program. And one of the, what became the cornerstone of our program is um, something called the Clean Marina Guidebook, which you can find online. And it is a tremendous resource um, for marinas and even boaters. Um, and it was all done. It was, it was only made, um, it could only be accomplished with the work of all these different partners. Um, currently, um, the program is funded with um, EPA or is funded by EPA and IDEM. And it's, the Clean Marine Program is not unique to Indiana. Um, in fact, there's 32 states. Um, that have clean marina programs. And just like each state's a little different, so are our programs. Now, with speaking of not being alone, Indiana is actually part of something called the Great Lakes Clean Marina Network. And this, um, it's a Great Lakes Restoration Initiative or GLRI funded um, network program. And we have the state's that you see up on the on the screen, all participating. And the goal or the purpose um, of the Great Lakes Clean Marina Network is to ensure that the quality of life, economic prosperity, and the environmental quality are achieved in the Great Lakes region by focusing on clean marina efforts and participation, getting more marinas to be involved in um, this really worthwhile program. So this map is depicting all the clean marinas 
um, in the Great Lakes region. Indiana is a little bit condensed. Uh, we currently have six um, certified clean marinas, um, but you'll only see three out of the five up on Lake Michigan shoreline, and then we have one down, down south in Bloomington. That's, so we are not alone. We're, we're in very good company. All right, so um, the moniker of the Clean Marina Program, um, kind of sometimes we give off the misconception that only marinas are eligible or should participate. And that couldn't be farther from the truth because we can have boat yards, yacht clubs, um, nonprofit organizations, voting organizations are all, anything that's related to marinas and boating um, it are pretty much eligible for the program. But the very first step in, um, on the journey is to make sure that everyone is in compliance with any, any and all applicable federal and state environmental rules and regulations. That's number one. So. All right, so why do we focus on marinas? Well, it may seem obvious, and that's because it is, and it's because marinas are like the Grand Central Station for boats. Um, there are a lot of marina activities and operations and other aspects to consider if you're planning to build a marina, um, where it should be located, if you're updating your marina, the design of it. We want to make sure that it protects um, the water and the, the aquatic habitats that are nearby. And, the, and that's and these activities on the screen, the fueling, the boat maintenance, engine maintenance, all this good stuff is um, found in our Clean Marina Guide Book. Great resources. To get into the nitty gritty of the program, once again, it is completely voluntary. So that's awesome. And Karen and I, we try not to be hard sell on our approach uh, to marinas to get them to participate. But I think you'll be able to tell from our presentation that we're very passionate about our program. So um, we think it's really um, a worthwhile cause and everybody should do it. So, um, and it's basically all about best management practices or BMPs. And uh, these are the actions we want the marinas to voluntarily take um, to help protect the waters. And and of course, not just marinas, but the boat yard, the yacht club, the boating, boating organizations, and further down in our, our talk, we'll talk about even boaters. So, and in the program, um, they fill out a checklist to, um, to outline all the, the, the BMPs that they're implementing, and then they contact item. We will do a site visit um, to verify uh, the best management practices being implemented. And the program also has an annual recertification procedure. So um, all the designated, once they're designated as a clean marina, each year they have to um, recertify. So, all right. Now the Clean Marina Guidebook, this tremendous resource, um, was designed to have um, two main sections really. There's the marine site location design, and it and it hits on the topics of stormwater runoff and its impacts and regulations of fueling stations, sewage facilities. And then when you go to the marina and boat operation activities, we have topics such as solid waste, fish waste, liquid materials, petroleum control, boat cleaning, public education, uh, boat operation, and the exotic and nuisance aquatic species that could be invading our waters in our marinas. So, and, um, You'll see these topics again. Now, it's actually very easy to become a clean marina. And Karen, myself, and other item staff are here and happy to help you along the way. Um, we have applicants. You start out by um, filling out our checklist. And um, the checklist has the best management practices and they're assigned a point total a point total. So if, like my, I mentioned earlier, you have to be in compliance with our environmental rules. And so I apologize for my home going up. Um, 
being in compliance with the rules is a zero. You, everybody has to do that. So there's no points given for that. But the other BMPs are um, assigned a point total um, directly depending on what do we think the protection of that BMP to the water quality, will it minimize or mitigate um, pollution or a negative impact? So like say a, say a marina has a fish cleaning station. Well, that is has a direct impact on uh, protecting the water. So that's gonna get you a five. Um, but if you just prevent people from cleaning fish in odd areas and, that, and that's like a one. So, and then when you fill out the checklist, all you need is a total of 80 points or 80% of the applicable points. And then you can be designated as a clean marina. So when we go into a picture of, or a section of the checklist itself, this topic is fish waste. And you'll see um, different BMPs. The BMPs also have pages that refer back to the guidebook in case you need um, help or a reference for it. And then there's columns. And it's very important, we always want to point people to the fourth column that is not applicable because that is where if you have a little marina and you don't have a fish cleaning station or you don't have these other ones, it doesn't apply to you. So you put the points in that total or in that column and you total it up because we do not want to penalize or deduct points from marinas and other entities for things that it doesn't apply to them. So you're not, it doesn't hurt your score at all. So good thing. And then at the very end of the checklist, you'll see a point summary table where you take all the total points from the awarded point column and the not applicable point column, and you put them in this table, add them all up, and then there's this easy peasy calculation at the bottom that'll uh, re reveal your score. And if you are 80% or above, um, and you are on your way to becoming a designated clean marina, they just, then you just have to uh, contact item. Um, if you can't you know, contact us, send us a checklist. We'll review, we'll come out, do a site visit, make sure everything's up and up and then you can be designated Indiana Clean Marina. So it's, re it's really not that bad. It's, and in, there's a lots of ways to get these points. And so Karen is gonna talk about what those are. Next. Michelle, yes, Please. we wanted to give everybody an idea of uh, some of the best management practices you can implement to become a clean marina. Um, there's a lot of really simple but effective ways for marinas to earn points toward the clean marina status and having clearly marked and centrally located trash and recycling bins and um, recycling fishing lines are just a couple of ways. Some of our members are even testing out innovative technologies such as the sea bin you see here to collect trash floating in the marina basin. Um, likely you've experienced small drips from fuel nozzles when you fuel your own vehicle or boat, but there are many ways to reduce these drips or worse yet spills. Um, so we award points to marinas who have spill containment equipment on the fuel docks and we even distribute the fuel bibs that you see here in this photo um, so boaters can catch any drips during fueling. They also receive points for having spill prevention plans as well as emergency spill plans in place and for training their employees in these processes. Uh, stormwater runoff at a marina often leads directly into the marina basin and can be a significant contributor of pollution. Lots of boat owners bring their four-legged friends along for a fun day, of, uh, fun day on the lake. Um, so marinas are encouraged to provide a specific location away from the water's edge for pets. Marinas should discourage patrons from feeding geese and gulls. Um, Michelle has funded studies which show high levels of E. coli can be found on beaches along Lake Michigan and have tracked that E. coli back to bird waste. So uh, in addition, marinas can also direct runoff from parking lots and roofs to vegetated buffers to filter the stormwater. 
IDEM is here to help marinas throughout the process of becoming a clean marina. We provide these signs to the clean marinas at no cost, and by installing them, the marinas earn points toward clean marina status. For those marinas who are working toward clean marina status, but they may not be there quite yet, this pledge is a great option to sign and post to show your patrons of your commitment to the environment and the work that you're doing toward becoming a certified clean marina. In addition, IDEM can come on site or during these COVID times, we can virtually do a site visit to walk through the clean marina program with you and um, how to apply it to a very specific marina. Um, we have the free guidebook that Michelle mentioned, which is also available on our website, and it describes environmental regulations in, in detail and how they apply to marina operations. Um, it also offers a lot of these best management practice ideas throughout the booklet. Um, the self-assessment is the clean marina application, and it's also an excellent way to determine what opportunities could be implemented at your marina. Once in the program, we provide clean marina signs, flags, an electronic copy of the logo that marinas use on their website, letterheads, um, your email signatures. Um, some marinas have even placed the logo on their employee shirts or hats. And then um, marinas are also provided lots of educational materials to distribute to their own patrons and members. We even have financial assistance to help marinas. If you're a marina that serves boats with onboard restroom facilities, we can provide financial assistance to install on-site pump outs. This um, grant reimburses 75% of the cost of the pump out. And we also offer um, annual grants that reimburse 75% of the cost to operate and maintain that pump out. This funding comes from the US Fish and Wildlife Service. IDEM also has a confidential group called CTAP or the Compliance and Technical Assistance Program. And they are uh, bound by Indiana law to maintain confidentiality. And uh, they're open for any business in Indiana to call to seek assistance on how to comply with environmental regulations. And uh, they are a fantastic resource and have been very helpful as we've um, gotten marinas into the Clean Marina program. We currently have six clean marinas in Indiana. Five of them are located along Lake Michigan. They are the Hammond Marina, Marina Shores at Dunes Harbor, Sammy L. Maletta Public Marina in Portage, Sprague's Point Marina, and Washington Park Marina, which are both in Michigan City. Many of these programs have been in the Clean Marina program since it began, and they recertify their membership annually. Earlier this month, we were excited to announce our very first inland marina program to join, or marina to join the program. Uh, it's the Lake Monroe Sailing Association, which is out of Bloomington. And even during the pandemic, they had press show up, a camera crew came out to cover the story and got some really nice coverage about their efforts to become a clean marina. I mean, what reporter wouldn't wanna go down to Lake Monroe on a sunny day with all the leaves changing colors in October? Let's see, yes, thanks, Michelle. The Lake Monroe Sailing Association has a fantastic attitude about the Clean Marina program and all that it represents. The members have recognized their role that they play on the lake is more than just being a sailing club. Uh, they see themselves as part of the entire lake community and their members uh, encourage membership in the program and they want their facility to have a positive impact on the lake. They're even hoping um, for a friendly cha challenge to other marinas on the lake and to sailing clubs around the state. So that's kind of the, the basics of the Clean Marina program. After we started working with marinas over the past several years, we learned that boaters also were interested in uh, becoming more aware about what they could do as individuals. So we began pr promoting a new program that Michelle is going to tell you a little more about. Thanks, Karen. I just want to mention uh, when Karen brought up the Lake Monroe Sailing Association um, had a press event, we actually have the video of that press event on our um, website. So hopefully after this, you guys can go check it out. So it was really neat. Okay. 
All right. So all of you who are lucky enough to be watching this today, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. So hope you're ready. But the key, the key to having clean water and a healthy watershed doesn't just involve, involve marinas. It involves the boaters too. And so I want to introduce you to, um, it's kind of like the little sister program to the uh, Clean Marina program, which is our Clean Boater program. Um, and it's complete with its own social media hashtag, hashtag Clean Boaters are in. So that was cute. It's, um, and, uh, oh, sorry, it was premature. So just like it's big sister program, um, it's an environmental pledge program. It's completely voluntary. Um, and our goal is we want to educate and encourage voters um, because they make tremendous stewards um, for protecting our waterways. So in having them implement easy um, best management practices um, can go a long way. So one bright spot, I think, for me for 2020 was um, being able to give the Indiana Clean Boater Program the attention it deserves. Um, we've, we've come into the 21st century by updating the Clean Boater Pledge form um, to an online form. So you can go online and take the boating pledge or Clean Boater Pledge. And uh, we're hoping to grow a clean boating community um, throughout the state. And it's, it's really exciting. Um, this expansion has been a long time coming uh, and we've been able to do a lot of it uh, with the help and thanks to um, a partnership that we have with the Indiana Bureau of Motor Vehicles, um, which is super cool. Um, we have a lot of things on the horizon for the clean boating program, um, not only with BMB, but also with Illinois Indiana Sea Grant. So I hope you, you guys will have to stay tuned for those. Um, just a little bit about uh, the learning the ropes of the clean motor program. Again, just like it's big sister program, it's completely voluntary. Um, through our partnership with BMB, um, we're able to um, share our messaging, our any clean boater information and stuff uh, through their annual renewal. So when uh, boaters register their uh, their boats with the BMV and they'll get annual renewals and BMV will um, send out information about, hey, take the pledge or learn more about the clean boating program. And also they, they help with hosting our stuff on their social media tools and platforms. And um, so that's awesome. So we have, we're excited to have a new partnership. Um, the boaters basically take a pledge. Uh, we do still have the paper form, but it's really super easy to, to go online and take it. It's a tiny, there's, there's, it's really easy to do. And then uh, we have, we have a lot of um, perks or, you know, opportunities to um, provide input to this, how we grow and expand this program um, with the voters help, get them involved and engaged and, um, and really share a lot of ideas uh, to protect our waterways through this boating community. And then, you know, why we focus on marinas and why do we focus on boaters? Well, because not only not only are boaters our secret weapon to on our crusade to protecting our waters, but there's a lot of them. Currently, we have over 200,000 and growing registered boats in Indiana. So that's, I mean, that is a huge number. And the the potential number of boaters to be our environmental stewards and opportunities to protect our waterways is just, it's just endless. And um, we want, we want them to be mindful and, you know, with this, you know, this great number of people and this great power comes a lot of responsibility. So we do, we want to spread the word and educate people about the activities that could have that negative impact to our waterways, um, such as fueling and boat cleaning and maintenance 
um, you know, the potential to spread aquatic invasive species to different water bodies and um, waste and sewage disposal. So now we, this the Clean Boater Program has a lot of information and just like the Clean Marina Program, we had about resources and information to help the marinas get those points. But well, we have tips and tricks for our boaters as well um, to do their part. And Karen's going to talk to you about those now. Thanks, Michelle. Well, if boaters, other boaters are anything like my dad, keeping their boat clean is a big priority. But this can mean a lot of opportunities for chemicals to enter the waterways. So uh, we recommend cleaning boats before launching and only cleaning where water is collected and treated um, as examples of best management practices. Boaters can also seek out cleaning chemicals that are phosphate free and that do not use chlorine and ammonia. You can see the logo here in the center is for EPA's Safer Choice, which is a program that offers a database of safer cleaning chemical alternatives. This slide pays homage to our Earth Day slogan of reduce, reuse, recycle. There are many ways that boaters can follow the three R's, such as recycling boat batteries, oil, and antifreeze. And we encourage boaters to try to use a reusable boat cover, which can help reduce the amount of shrink wrap and plastic that ends up in landfills. Another good practice that boaters can do to protect our shorelines and aquatic habitats is idling in slow waters and obeying the no wake zones. An ongoing uh, hand in hand with protecting ecosystems and aquatic habitats is keeping them free from invaders. Aquatic invasive species are one of the greatest threats to our, to our lakes and rivers and um, new species continue to be detected all the time. So the partners of IDEM, DNR, and the Illinois Indiana Sea Grant work to share information on them by posting signs, updating websites, and through social media tools. And the easiest practice a boater can do is help out um, by properly disposing of all waste. Be sure to put trash and recyclables in the re appropriate receptacles and properly dispose of fish waste and tackle and always pick up after pets. To help get these messages out to boaters, we offer new resources every year. One of our most popular boater resources is the fish ruler, which you can see in the upper right hand corner here. Last summer, we rolled out the conducting maintenance poster in the lower right hand corner. It encourages proper engine maintenance to reduce leaks among other things. And then next summer, we'll be offering the help us reduce fuel spill sign to marinas um, to place on their fuel docks. This summer, uh, we rolled out a really cool idea from our media department. Um, it's these social media kits for boaters, which are now available on our website, which the website is listed right there. The kits offer downloadable graphics, tweets, Facebook posts, and articles that anyone can use to promote the clean boating messages. And many of the graphics you've seen in our presentation today are available as part of this kit. This was a request from our clean marinas um, who wanted some pre-written messages that they could quickly drop into their own newsletters and websites. So this was kind of an exciting rollout this summer for us. These are just a few more examples of uh, what you'll find in that social media kit. Finally, we offer a website where boaters can search for marinas in Indiana. Through this site, boaters can pull up all the certified clean marinas in the state, or they can click on the tab that has uh, the list of all marinas that have pump outs available. And then there are also tabs for each region of the state. This um, is an online database that you see here, but we also have a hard copy version um, that you can download from our website or you can contact us for copies. It's one of our higher demand publications that we offer. Currently, we have clean boaters in 26 communities and even one outside of our state. Uh, our over 100 members will soon be voting on a logo for the program and will um, be the first to know when new resources and information become available. It's so far, uh, the Clean Boater Program has proven a great way to get the message out about protecting Indiana's lakes and rivers. 
Michelle, I'll turn it back to you. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure you didn't want to talk about maybe, oh, like the Lake Marina or the Lake Monroe? The thing Lake Monroe, yeah, I can talk more, I can talk more about that. <laughs> um, There's an yes. incentive there. That's innovative. We, we, we hadn't seen it before. So. Okay. Um, so the Lake Monroe Sailing Association has members um, and they have member dues. And one of the ways that members can offset their dues is by volunteering their time to help work at the marina. And uh, when they became a clean marina this fall, they wanted to encourage their own members to join the, pro the clean boater program. And they did that by um, offering uh, a couple hours, I believe, of time off of their required work time there at the marina for anyone who decided to pledge and become a clean boater. And so they had over 90 of their members join the clean boater program and um, have been a fun group to work with so far. Yes, I hope other other um, organizations or in marinas and stuff uh, well, kind of use it as a model. That's a great, it's such a great idea. So we're, we're nearing the end guys. And I just wanted to wrap it up by saying, um, boaters play an integral part in, in not only keeping our recreational waters clean, um, but also our watersheds healthy. And I know that's a big part of why you guys all tuned in today for this webinar series. And I mean, honestly, who doesn't want to have clean waters and healthy ecosystems and, and healthy and safe watersheds to live in and enjoy. So if you're a boater or you know a boater, um, I want you to encourage them and, and consider yourself um, taking the pledge or at least finding out more about it. Um, I, I promise you it's the best decision ever because hashtag clean boaters are IN. They're in. That's it. We did. Wow. We, we ended faster than we thought, Michael. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, both of you, um, for sharing all of that information with um, folks in attendance on the call. Um, those of you who are um, who are on the call, feel free to um, unmute yourself and um, ask a question of Michelle or Karen um, if you have one. Otherwise, um, you can also type any questions you might have into the chat window. I actually have a question myself um, for both of you. Um, I was wondering what, um, when you get questions about this, when you talk to boaters or talk to marinas, um, what, I guess, what is the most, what are the most common um, types of questions that you get or, you know, maybe sources of confusion about the program that you find? Um, just curious. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'll 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 go first, Karen. Um, I know in one of the challenges I've I've come across um, since being a part of this program was um, a, the the guidebook is really really big. It's really thick. Um, the checklist is currently 13 pages long, and it can seem daunting to people or you know, and it's and it's really not as bad as it may look or appear on the surface. Um, once you get the hang of it, or you know, once you know you talk to us and we, we walk you through the checklist and and different BMPs that can be done. I mean, any any uh, almost any marina or yacht club, or I mean, they can they can make it. They can get that um, those 80% of those points, it's not, as, it's not as difficult, I think, as um, I think people think. And a lot of it is like our smaller marinas, 
you know, think maybe it's like a competition or like they can't compete with the, the big municipal um, marinas that are especially like the ones on Lake, on Lake Michigan shoreline um, that have a lot of resources and city money behind them. And, um, and, and, and it's not about that, you know, there, that's where those not applicable points come in where are my smaller ones, we have Sprague Point in Michigan City is my classic example poster child where, you know, it has very few amenities or, you know, things. It has, it gets a lot of points for being not applicable because it doesn't have an, or offer a lot of the things that are listed on that checklist. But it just doesn't, you know, they just don't apply to them. So you don't have to be grand, this grand scale marina or anything. Um, and you can actually do it. And a lot of the best management practices, like pet, pet waste stations, um, you know, fuel bibs, you know, there's a lot of low cost, but um, big impact type of BMPs they can, they can um, institute. So what about you, Karen? I think for me, um, one of the questions I get besides the one you've just mentioned is what happens if you find something wrong when you come visit? There's a fear that uh, we're from IDEM and, and uh, we're there to ding them. And I think this is an example of a program that truly is, <laughs> as much as we hate to say this, we're from the government and we're here to help. <laughs> that really is what this program is about. We. We do want to help marinas do the right thing, and the marinas that tend to join programs like this are ones that want to do the right thing, and it gives you peace of mind when, when you've gone through this program, gone through the checklist, and had us come out and walk through um, to know that you've taken care of issues uh, that that maybe you've been concerned about and didn't know what to do. And we're not here to turn you in or get you in trouble. We, we want to help you do the right thing and, and get you some recognition for doing the right thing too. Um, and I think we've got a lot of great resources to offer these marinas and by not participating, they're missing out on, on those resources that we can provide. Yeah, that's a great point because um, our CTAP staff that goes out with us, I mean, you know, if any marina has or any boating facility has any question about, you know, like you said, they, what if they're not in compliance or what if they're not meeting a rule and we have the staff will go out confidential, they, they won't, you know, fine you or write you up for a notice of violation or anything. You contact them because you want to know. Um, and it's good to know, you know, we, then you can address them. Like if you, if they find something, you know, they're not going to turn you in, but they will help you um, write any deficiencies um, that they might find. So it's a great, it's a great resource um, and a, a great part of the program that we have. Definitely. We actually have a question in the chat. It um, <laughs> says, thanks for the presentation. Do marina personnel and or boaters participating in the program go through any kind of mandatory um, formal or informal training or education from item about the program or do they receive the necessary materials and learn on their own i can kind yeah, of I think answer that from the recent okay, um, lake monroe, <laughs> sorry michelle lake monroe sailing association um there is no mandatory training uh, nothing like that. However, on-site assistance for sure. And um, going through, I think Lake Monroe Sailing Association did a lot of going through the materials on their own, but we do offer sessions such as this uh, or on-site um, where we can provide assistance as we go. And I did a, a email, lot of emails with Lake Monroe and over the phone, anytime they had questions, they were welcome to call. I think the quote from them, <laughs> recently after they became a clean marina was I felt like I that Karen was part of my staff <laughs> because we we talked whenever they had questions or needed ideas and and that's another cool thing about this program is the the members the current clean marina members are doing some innovative stuff 
especially up there on Lake, uh, on Lake Michigan. And so they have ideas to share about what's worked and what's not working. And, um, and it's fun to be able to share those ideas with marinas and others who are interested in learning about what they can do on their, on their own lakes. Yeah, I mean, just to kind of add to what you were saying, Karen, um, you know, I know that um, you guys as well, uh, both of you as well as CTAP staff spend a lot of time um, working with marinas and answering questions and you spend, you know, a lot of time when you're on the site visits visiting the marina. So there, there really is a lot of opportunity for um, marinas to um, ask questions or to um, get more information from from you about how to implement these best management pro, pro, uh, practices and how to be successful. Yes, I agree. Any other questions for Michelle or Karen today? No. Going once, <laughs> going twice. All right. Well, hearing none, um, I would, <laughs> uh, I'd just like to thank everyone who was able to tune in today. Um, as a reminder, um, this, the slides from this presentation will be made available on the um, item website for the webinar series, which is posted in the chat window. Um, in addition, a uh, recording of this particular session will also be um, made available um, and posted to that same site. So um, with that, I think we'll close down for today. And thank you again for to everybody who um, tuned in. Thank you, Thanks, everybody.